Welcome to the Blood Type and Lab. In this lab, we will cover the basics of understanding the components of blood, blood types, and permissible blood transfusions. First off, what makes up our blood? Blood is a mixture of, of the liquid and solids. 55% of blood is the liquid portion known as plasma. It's mostly water, but there are also plasma proteins such as clotting factors and antibodies. Electrolytes, which function in osmotic balancing and pH buffering of the blood, and materials that are transported throughout the body, such as dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide, are respiratory gases, nutrients from the digestive system, and hormones from the endocrine system, just to name a few. The other 45% of blood is the formed elements. Erythrocytes are red blood cells, leukocytes are white blood cells, and thrombocytes are platelets. When a sample of blood is centrifuged, the top layer is the plasma. The thin white line, known as the buffy coat, is where the leukocytes and platelets are found, and the bottom layer is where the erythrocytes are found. Erythrocytes function in transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout the body. Leukocytes function in defending the body against materials which our body recognizes as foreign. Thrombocytes function in forming blood clots, known as coagulation. This is found in broken blood vessels, so we don't bleed to death due to a small cut. Now let's take a look at blood typing. Do you know your blood type? What does it mean to have blood type O positive? Or maybe your blood type AB positive or AB negative? Let's discuss the different blood groups. One's blood is typed by checking for the presence of specific glycoproteins which are found on the surface of an erythrocytes membrane. Or remember we can say the red blood cells membrane. These glycoproteins are known as self antigens. So your body recognizes these as you or self and your body's immune system does not attack them. There are four blood groups, A, B, AB, and O. Seen diagrammed here are the four main blood groups. Let's take a look at blood type A. See the A antigens found on the surface of the red blood cells membrane? Type B has the B antigen. Type AB has both A and B antigens. But look at blood type O. It has no antigens on the surface of the red blood cells membrane. Something else to take a look at with blood typing. Let's look in the plasma. Antibodies against foreign antigens are found in the blood's plasma. So back to the graphic. If someone has blood type A, anti-B antibody is found in the plasma to defend against B antigens. Type B has the anti-A antibodies. Type AB has no antibodies because it has both of the self antigens. But look at blood type O. Remember it does not have any antigens, A or B, so it has both anti-A and anti-B antibodies. Think about it this way. Antibodies are the fighters for what your body does not know or is not self. So if you're blood type A and you have an A antigen, well you don't know the B antigen, so you need the fighter against that, the anti-B antibody. Let's also discuss compatible blood types in an emergency situation. It is best to receive your blood type if you're in need of a transfusion, but some of you are able to receive donor's blood that is not your type. Type A blood can receive type A, of course, but it can also receive blood type O. Type B receives type B itself and also type O. Type AB can receive blood type A, B, AB, and O. But take a look at type O. It can only receive itself. Type O. 
Let's go through some examples and see why. When deciding whether a blood transfusion is permissible or not, remember this. It is the recipient's antibodies that agglutinate the donor's red blood cells. Agglutination is the clumping of mismatched red blood cells when the recipient's antibodies react against the donor's antigens. Take a look at this first example. Type A blood is the recipient and type B is the donor. It is the recipient's antibodies that agglutinate the donor's red blood cells. Does type A have an antibody against type B's antigens? Well, yes it does. So no, this transfusion is not permissible because the recipient's anti-B antibodies will agglutinate the donor's B antigens. Second example, type O blood is the recipient, type AB is the donor. Again, remember, it is the recipient's antibodies that agglutinate the donor's red blood cells. Does type O have an antibody against type AB's antigens? Yes, it does. So no, again, this transfusion is not permissible because the recipient's anti-A and B antibodies will agglutinate the donor's A and B antigens. Third example, type A blood is the recipient and type O is the donor. Does type A have an antibody against type O's antigens? No. So yes, this transfusion is permissible because the recipient, even though it does have anti-B antibodies, but look at the donor, type O. It has no antigens, not even the B antigen, right? So no agglutination will occur. Last example, type AB blood is the recipient, type O is the donor. Does type AB have any antibodies against type O's antigens? No. So yes, this transfusion is permissible. It does not matter that type O has both anti-A and anti-B antibodies because, remember, it's the recipient's antibodies that are doing the agglutinating or attacking, not the donors. So type AB blood can receive all blood types. Therefore, we refer to it as the universal recipient. Type A can receive type A and type O. Type B can receive type B and type O. But type O can, re can only receive itself, type O. It donates to everyone, so we refer to blood type O as the universal donor. If you know your blood type, you may know that you're not just blood type A your blood type A positive or A negative. There is another blood group known as the RH blood group. The presence or absence of the RH antigen is the basis for typing one's blood as positive or negative. A positive, B positive, AB positive, and O positive each have the RH antigen on the surface of the red blood cell's membrane. The plasma will contain no RH antibodies. A, B, A, B, and O negative blood groups each do not have the RH antigen on the surface of its red blood cells membrane. But here something a little bit different. The plasma will not contain RH antibodies unless the person has been sensitized or has been in contact with the RH antigen. Back to the permissible transfusion graphic. We understand that blood type B can receive blood type O, 
But what if we look at the whole picture and we're dealing with blood type O positive and blood type B positive? Well, yes, this transfusion is permissible because both blood types have the Rh antigen. And we have already established that type B can receive blood type O. But what if the recipient is blood type B negative and it's receiving blood type O positive? The first transfusion will not cause a reaction because blood type B negative blood does not normally carry those anti-RH antibodies. But after this first transfusion, blood type B negative is sensitized to the RH antigen and will begin to, pro and will begin to produce the anti-RH antibodies that in the future will agglutinate the RH antigens in any subsequent transfusions. So it's not a good idea for B negative blood to receive O positive blood. Let's look at another example of the recipient being type AB negative and receiving type A positive blood. The first transfusion will not cause a reaction because remember type AB negative blood does not normally carry the anti-RH antibodies. But if this transfusion were to take place, AB negative will now be sensitized to the RH antigens and will begin to produce the anti-RH antibodies that will agglutinate those RH antigens in any subsequent transfusions. RH negative blood groups should never receive RH positive blood. So when considering a blood transfusion, the true, the true universal recipient is AB positive and the true universal donor is O negative. Now, are you more interested in finding out your own blood type?